Our Messiah took the cup and blessed it and offered it to his disciples, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink from it, all of you. And whoever drinks the water I give him will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Well, I'm through lying and I'm through crying My brain's out on the TV Call me crazy, but I think maybe a change is happening to me Once I wanted and always wanted the best of societies That is left in tatters and now what matters is not who's coming for me I don't know where my fortune will go I don't know why they want me to stay I can only tell you the joy they say Is not what I'm feeling today The rich boy's father would not even bother To check on how he was doing But Yahweh's blessing, his love and caressing Is now all I am pursuing Goodbye to rambling and to greed and gambling Hello to service and care a hand for my brothers, my sisters, and the others is how I'm learning to share. I don't know where my fortune will go. I don't know why they want me to stay. I can only tell you the joy they say is not what I'm feeling today. Hallelujah, the joy flows through you whenever you always pray. Raise your hands toward heaven and remove the leaven in your life. You'll be amazed. We are heirs to the kingdom and the crowns he will bring them when we rise up to meet him in the air. Get rid of all your possessions and your transgressions, then follow your shoes everywhere. I don't care where the money will go. I don't care what they want me to say. I can only tell you the joy they tell you. It's not like I'm feeling today. and iniquity. When will you stand with the brave? When will you see what I see? Now is 
to time to don all of the armor and fight our wicked enemy. Now bring away tears. Come on and oh, bring away tears. Just hold out your hand to him and bring away must be shortened or mankind will perish as sure as we all disagree. Be sober and watchful because of the lion who walks about looking for thee. When will you listen and care? When will your eyes start to see? The righteous will scarcely be saved if they're prayerful, but where shall the ungodly be? So bring away of the weakest in our midst, taking all they earned, leaving nothing learned, but a yearning that persists. All of us have seen those who fall between what the world sees as the norm, but we pass them on, caught up in the throng, wanting only to conform. Come to me, he cries, do not agonize, set your worries and fear aside. Come to me and rest, lay here on my breast, I will comfort you, my bride. People come and go, but they do not know how to cope. With grief and stress, paying doctor's bills for little advice and pills, giving deeper in distress. Long ago, we're told Yahweh did unfold a solution to our pain, sending his own son. Satan's now undone when we call on Yahshua's name. Yes, to me, he cries, do not agonize, set your worries and fear aside. Come to me and rest, lay here on my breast, I will comfort you, my bride. All the birds have come, I'm left on my own as I walk beside the sea. Thinking of the way that he died that day so that I might be set free. Then a trumpet sounds, lightnings all around, and the sky is glowing bright. From the east and west, set for his conquest, ride my king on his horse of white. Come to me, he cries, with fire in his eyes. Take this linen robe and crown. Come to me and rest, eternally be blessed. Now you can lay your burdens down. Set your worries and fear aside. Come to me and rest. 
just fill my cup
something happened and now I know he touched me and made me whole well since I met this blessed Savior and since he cleansed and made Oh 
Yahweh is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters, and he restores. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. For his name's sake. They comfort me, and He restores my soul, and He leads me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake, for His name's sake. Preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over, for he stores my soul and he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake for his name's sake and surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I, and will, I will dwell in your house O oh, Yahweh forever where you restore my soul For your name's sake, for your name's sake, forevermore. everybody here several people are out ill with this flu bug that I got traveling from Japan hope I didn't give it to you <laughs> tried to stay away from you as much as I could until I was having to be here to, to 
preach Yahweh's message. But yes, they. Uh, it, it's a it's a bad little bug. It it holds on. The uh, average time on it is two weeks. So we're praying for those people to have a speedily speedy recovery. And then Sister Regina, don't forget her. She is um, dealing with her father's death and will bury him this week. So pray for her. As oftentimes is the case, uh, there are family issues about what is left. And so she's having to go through that with her step-siblings. And so please pray for her because uh, that gets to be a stressful situation, doesn't it? I'm sure many of you have had to deal with similar situations. Death brings out the worst in families sometimes. <laughs> so just pray for her, will you? And Brother Gerald is out with, uh, with the flu also, so be praying for him. And uh, Brother Steve, he's okay. Okay. Okay, there you go. Yes. Mm-hmm. We'll be praying for those at the end of the uh, uh, service. So remind me at the end of the service. Uh, also, Brother Larry, continue to meet, remember him. The fear of Yahweh is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Praise Yahweh, my soul. Yahweh, my Elohim, you are very great. You're clothed with splendor and majesty. Yahweh wraps himself in light as with a garment. And he stretched out the heavens like a tent. Gentlemen, would you please stand to put on your talit. And ladies, hold on to your seat seat. Baruch atah Yahweh, Elohim melech Asher kedeshanu b'mitzvotav, vitzivanu al mitzvot tzitzit. Amen. Which means, blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us concerning the doctrine of tzitzit. And here is that doctrine. Throughout the generations to come, you are to make tassels on the corners of your garment with a cord of techelet, which is a unique kind of heavenly blue on each tassel. You will have these tassels to look at, and you will remember all the commands of Yahweh, that you may obey them and not prostitute yourself by chasing after the lust of your own hearts and eyes. And then you will remember to obey all my commands and will be consecrated to your Elohim. In Numbers 15, 38-40. Baruch atah Yahweh, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kedeshanu b'mitzvotav, vitzivanu lahitatev b'asitzit. Amen. Which means, blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to enwrap ourselves with tzitzit. And this being your own personal tabernacle, house of Yahweh, we say, I was glad when they said to me, let us go into the house of Yahweh. You may be reseated. I will exalt you, Yahweh, for you lifted me out of the depths and did not let my enemies gloat over me. Yahweh, my Elohim, I call to you for help and you healed me. You, Yahweh, brought me up from the realm of the dead. You spared me from going down to the abyss. Sing the praises of Yahweh, you, his faithful people. Praise his holy name. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last only for the night, but joy comes in the morning. When I felt secure, I said, I'll never be shaken. Yahweh, when you favored me, you made my royal mountain stand firm. But when you hid your face, I was dismayed. To you, Yahweh, I called. To Adonai, I cried for mercy. What is gained if I'm silenced, I said? If I go down to the abyss, will the dust praise you? Will it proclaim your faithfulness? 
Hear Yahweh. Be merciful to me. Yahweh, help me. You turn my wailing into dancing. You remove my sackcloth and clothe me with joy that my heart may sing your praises and not be silent. Yahweh, my Elohim, I will praise you forever. Amen. Mato together the Israelites are to observe the Sabbath celebrating it for the generations to come as a lasting covenant it will be a sign between me and the Israelites forever for in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed let us all stand and make our profession of faith as we face Jerusalem the holy city of David
Israel. Yahweh is our Elohim. Yahweh is one. Blessed is the name of his glorious kingdom for all eternity. You shall love Yahweh your Elohim with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign upon your hand and let them be frontlets between your eyes. You shall fix them as a mezuzah on the doorpost of your house and upon your gates. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Remain standing as we pray. The Netzarim Amada are the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever you may be reseated. Baruch Ata Yahweh, Elachinu Melaka Olam, Asher Natan Lanu et Derek, Ha Yeshua, Mashiach Yeshua, which means all together, Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us the way of salvation in Messiah Yeshua. Speedily cause the branch of David thy servant to spout, and let his horn be exalted by thy salvation, because daily do we wait for thy salvation. Altogether, I believe with perfect faith in the coming of the Messiah, ever how long it takes. I await his coming every single day. Barku et Yahweh Hambarek. Bless Yahweh who is to be praised. Altogether, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh your Elohim. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son nor your daughter nor your male servant nor your female servant, nor your cattle nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days Yahweh made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them. And he rested the seventh day, Therefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Therefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations as a perpetual covenant. This will be a sign between me and you for the generations to come, so that you may know that I am Yahweh who makes you holy. O Yahweh, among the Elohim, who is like you, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders, Oh, 
save and who is like me none like you among the Elohim. Yahweh, there are no deeds like yours. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout the generations. Yahweh rules. Yahweh has ruled and Yahweh will rule forever and ever. Yahweh will give strength to his people. Yahweh will bless his people with wholeness or shalom. Father, mercy bestow your favor upon Sion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. For in you alone we trust, Elohim and ruler, high and exalted, master of all the world.
and is to come, who was and is to come. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Baruch Hashem Yahweh, Baruch Hashem Yahweh. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Yahweh, you are holy and your name is holy. And the holy ones praise your name every single day, forever. Blessed are you, the Holy One of Israel. When the ark would travel, Moses would say, Arise, O Yahweh, and let your enemies be scattered, and let them that hate you flee from you. For from Sion will go forth the Torah and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Blessed is he who in his holiness gave the Torah to his people Israel. For it's from Sion that the Torah will go forth. And the word of Adonai from Jerusalem. Truly blessed is he that has given the Torah to his people, the commonwealth of Israel, in holiness. And everyone says, Amen. Come forward, Lisa, daughter of the Torah. You may be receded. The Torah is at rest. Blessed is Yahweh who is blessed altogether. Blessed is Yahweh who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed is Yahweh who is blessed forever and ever. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who chose us from among all the people and gave us his Torah. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of the Torah. The reading today is from Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. Now therefore give heed, O Israel, to the statutes and to the judgments which I teach you to do them, that you may live and go in and possess the land which Yahweh Elohe of your fathers gives you. You shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish nothing from it, that you may keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohe which I command you. Your eyes have seen what Yahweh did because of Baal Peor to all the men who followed Baal Peor. Yahweh, your Elohe, has destroyed them from among you. But you who held fast to Yahweh, your Elohe, are alive, every one of you, this day. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and implanted eternal life within us. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of the Torah. Come forward, Jennifer, you who consider the prophets. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who chose good prophets and who was pleased with their words which were spoken truthfully. Blessed are you, Yahweh, who chose the Torah, Moshe his servant, Israel his people, and the prophets of truth and righteousness. This evening's reading is from Isaiah 56, verses 1 through 8. Thus says Yahweh, keep Keep judgment and do justice, for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Happy is the man who does this, and the son of man who lays hold on it, who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, and keeps his hand from doing any evil. Do not let the son of the stranger who has joined himself to Yahweh, speak, saying, Yahweh has completely separated me from his people. Nor let the eunuch say, Behold, I am a dry tree. For thus says Yahweh to the eunuchs, who keep, keep my Sabbaths and choose the things that please me and take hold of my covenant. And to them 
will I give in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than sons and of daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the stranger who join themselves to Yahweh to serve him and to love the name of Yahweh, to be his servants and everyone who keeps the Sabbath and does not profane it, and all who hold fast to my covenant. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called the house of prayer for all peoples. Adonai, Yahweh, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, says, Yet I gather others to him beside those who are already gathered. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, Rock of all ages, righteous in all generations, the Almighty, the Faithful One, who says and does, who speaks and fulfills, for all his words are true and right. For the Torah, for the divine service, for the prophets, and for the Sabbath day, which you gave us, Yahweh or Elohim, for holiness and for rest, for honor, for glory, and for this, Yahweh, our Elohim, we thank you and bless you. Blessed be your name by the mouth of all living, continually forever. Blessed are you, Elohim, sanctifier of the Sabbath. Come forward, earth of faithful disciple of King Messiah Yeshua. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has given us his only begotten Son as our Redeemer, and has given a new covenant to the house of Israel, unifying the two into one new kingdom, the commonwealth of Israel. Blessed are you, Yahweh, who chose the original twelve apostles to bring this message of renewal to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and has chosen us to carry on that work to shift Israel from the nation where you scattered them. May this reading stir the hearts of your people. The Nazarene scripture will be from Romans 10 from verse 17 through 21. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of Elohim. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the hurt and their words unto the hand of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moshe said, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. But Esaias is very bold and said, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifested unto them that hacks not after me. But for Israel, he said, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, for ratifying the new covenant that gives your people a law of return by the sacrificial blood of your son, King Messiah, Yeshua. We thank you for giving us the full messianic message of the kingdom. We proclaim to all the, the world the kingdom is at hand. For all this, Yahweh, our Elohim, we thank you and bless you. Blessed are you, Yahweh, who has renewed covenant with your people, Israel. Come forth, Ed, and bring to Israel the song of truth.
Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who selected people of praise and was pleased with their worship in spirit and truth. You raised up David, your faithful servant, and righteous anointed, the sons of Korah, who brought honor to their house, and righteous worshipers in every generation, to sing songs of delight in your presence, and you inhabit their praise. Blessed are you, Yahweh, giver of the psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. <coughs> to Psalms chapter 124, Tehillim Kof Kof Dalit, verses 2 and 3 and 6 through 8. If it had not been that Yahweh, who was on our side, Lule Yahweh Shehaya Lanu, when men rose up against us, Bekum, Alenu Adam. Then they would have swallowed us up alive, Zahayim Be'ala'unu, when their wrath was kindled against us, Baharot Apam Banu. Blessed be Yahweh, Baruch Yahweh, who has not given us as a prey, Shelo Natan, na, excuse me, Shelo Netananu Teref. To their teeth, le shenehem. Our soul, nafshenu, as a bird, ketzipor, has escaped from the snare of the fowlers. Nim leta mipak yokshim. The snare is broken, apak nishbar, and we have escaped, vahanaknu nimlatnu. Our help is in the name of of Yahweh, Ezreinu Bashem Yahweh, Ezreinu Bashem Yahweh, who made heaven, Ose Shamayim, and earth, Va'aretz. May it be your will, Yahweh our Elohim, and the Elohim of our ancestors, that you pay heed and mercy to the psalm that I have recited, and may it stand in love, fellowship, and companionship, for we love you and you alone. This is the Torah which Moses placed before the children of Israel. Behold, a good doctrine has been given to you. My Torah, Yahweh says, do not forsake it. Altogether, all that Yahweh has said, we will do in here. If you do, then it's a tree of life to those who grasp it and those who support it or bless it. His ways are the ways of pleasantness and all of his paths are peace. Help us to return to you, Yahweh, and then truly shall we return. Renew our days as in the days past. Amen. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Yahweh, my strength and my redeemer. Blessed are you, Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and has commanded us to engross ourselves in the study of his word. Amen. You may be reseated. Amen. 
this is the closing of the message that I began um, a short while ago. It's been a while now. And there has been an, up, an uproar of wanting to have the rest of the message. And so today I will give you the rest of the message of the end time message. And today's unique uh, mess, part of the message is Noah's Ark, the real story. Noah's Ark, the real story. Gilbert H. Grosvenor, the former president of the National Geographic Society, said this. If the ark were to be discovered, it would be the greatest archaeological discovery of all time. End of quote. And that is true. To see tangibly this huge boat that saved not only mankind but all of creation from the judgment of the flood, that the perpetuity of the human race as well as the animals on this planet would carry on because Yahweh had given an avenue of escape, a plan of salvation through the judgment of the deluge. Some people have a hard time believing in a story simply because it's old. But can there be any doubt that some ark seekers actually saw the ark and brought back literal evidence that the Ark of Noah exists to this very day. There have been artifacts dating back to antiquity found where the Ark is supposed to be. So can the skeptics be wrong? Can those Ark hunters be right? You simply cannot discount the eyewitness accounts. We must find the truth. But how far will we go? All of these findings certainly gives us ample reason to return to the mountains of Ararat for further research. But is this enough to convince the skeptics that the story of Noah is true? And if Noah's ark is on the mountains of Ararat, why hasn't anybody found it? Or have they? For the average person, the only convincing proof of the truth of the story of Noah is the discovery of Noah's Ark itself. Could the Ark have survived after the Great Flood? According to Barossus, it did. He was a Babylonian writer who wrote the history of Babylonia in the early part of the 3rd century BCE. He said that he visited the site in about 475 BCE. And here's what he said, and I quote, A portion of the vessel still survives in Armenia on the mountains of the Chaldeans. That's what they call the, the mountains of Ararat. And that persons carry off pieces of the Buddhaman, or the covering, which they use as talismans. End of quote. Hernonymous, the Egyptian writer that wrote the history of the Parthians in 30 BCE, said this. This is a great mountain in Armenia. There is a great mountain in Armenia over Minyas called Baris, upon which it is reported that many who fled at the time of the deluge were saved and that one who has carried in an ark came on shore upon the top of it and that the, mountain, or that the remains of the timber were a great while preserved. This might be the man about whom Moses, the legislature of the Jews, wrote. End of quote. In the writings of Flavius Josephus, in his book, The Antiquity of the Jews, we find this written in 50 CE. And I quote, However, the Arminians call this place the place of descent for the ark being saved in that place, it remains or shown there by the inhabitants to this day. End of quote. The testimonies go on. The first century CE, Nicholas of Damascus, mentions that he saw the remains of Noah's Ark with its timbers clearly visible. In 360 CE, Epiphanius made a pilgrimage to the Ark in the Gordian Mountains. 
In 620 CE, according to Hussein al masin of Baghdad, Roma, Roman Emperor Heraclius visits the remains of the Ark after conquering the Persian city of Thamamun. In 1254 CE, the Armenian Hatton, referring to Noah's Ark, said that it was visible. And even in 1820, explorer Claudius James Rich writes that Aga Hussein has seen the remains of the Ark. In 1269, the renowned explorer Marco Polo in his book The Travel said that he had seen the Ark of Noah near the snowy glaciers of Mount Ararat. Near the snowy, snowy glaciers at Ararat. Not on them. Remember that. In 1829, Dr. Frederick Perrault makes the first modern ascent of greater Ararat. But on his way up the mountain, he visits the ancient St. James Monastery and he sees an ancient relic of the Ark, a piece of wood that they carved a, a cross out on. He said, oh man, this monastery was on the side of Mount Ararat, shaped like a boat. You say, oh man, where is that monastery today? Well, you see, Ararat is a volcano. And so when it erupted in 1840, it destroyed the monastery and it destroyed the relics inside it. Then at the close of the 1940s, the mountains of Ararat finally gave up their first 20th century clues to the Ark's existence and whereabouts. It was to be the beginning of a series of modern day successes cracking the secrets of the ark. It was on the evening of May the 14th, 1948. Does anybody remember that date? Maybe not personally, but do you remember what's important about that date? What was it? It's the founding of Israel. And in fact, on that evening, at the stroke of midnight, when there is revelry in the streets of Jerusalem, and everyone's basking in the glory of their independence. An earthquake hits the mountains of Ararat. And un unearths this. You remember what Yeshua said? The disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will the end happen? And what will be the sign of your coming at the end of the age? Matthew 24 and 3. It's a mystery to which all mankind has been seeking the answers. What's going to happen? And this was one of the signs. As it was in the days of Noah, so it shall be also at the coming of the Son of Man. I don't think that just means that people are going to be wicked at the end times. He could have said like it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's more apropos. apropos. Why did he say as it was in the days of Noah if Noah is not going to give us a clue to the end of the age? He said that in Matthew 24, 36 to 44. Tell us when these things will be and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age. I believe we just moved a little closer to the end of the age on the old prophetic time clock. In fact, I believe with the founding of the nation of Israel, on the very same day we found the Ark of Noah, it has accelerated the prophetic progression. We are in the end times. That evening, <laughs> when they peered out at the end of of this drive at what had just been unearthed the elders of the nearby village of Dagu Bayasit declared that a miracle had occurred the relic of the village namesake had returned to them the Ark of Noah for you see D Dagu Bayasit means the city of the boat why would a city that dates back to the time of the kingdom of Arartu, or Ur, and sits at an elevation of 5,331.36 feet above sea level, name itself after a boat! 
in another nearby village, Nakshavan. They have this crest. The Brockhaus and Etron Encyclopedia Dictionary notes that according to the legend of the city of Nakshavan, it was founded by Noah, and the date of the town, according to Por Persian sources, is 1539 BCE. Notice, on the crest of the city, there is the flood. And what is that on top of that mountain? It's the ark. In 1955, Ferdinand Navarra, the French industrialist, says he saw under the ice a dark mass in 1955. And in the 1969, he returned to the area and pulled out a piece of wood that he brought down the mountain to have it analyzed in four laboratories, Cairo, Madrid, Paris, and Bordeaux. Huh. The test showed that the wood was too young. What he actually found on Mount Ararat, Mount Ararat, wasn't the ark, but it was the remains of St. James Monastery that had been destroyed in 1840. In fact, all of these people that had been going up to Mount Ararat claiming they had p found a piece of wood here and there, they did find wood. It just wasn't the ark. It was the monastery. Explorers long thought that the ark was upon Mount Ararat itself, which is a beautiful volcano. But it, this is a scripture contradiction. They're digging in the wrong place. You see, if you're going to have a search for Noah's ark, you've got to go by what the scripture says. And in fact, it started the story, didn't it? It never says the ark was on Mount Ararat. The scriptural account says on the mountains of Ararat. The whole mountainous region is Aratu or Ararat. It was Alexander the Great that named the tallest peak Mount Ararat. Listen to what it says in Genesis 8, 3 and 4. The water receded steadily from the earth. At the end of the 150 days, the water had gone down. And on the 17th day of the seventh month, the ark came to rest on the mountains of Ararat. Well, there's the main peak. There's little Ararat. And there's this mountain. Mount Kudi. You know what that means? The mountain of doomsday. <laughs> the mountain of doomsday. I wonder why I called it that. Well, because it certainly was doom for the generation of the flood, wasn't it? But could it be that those that lived in this area thought that when the ark would reemerge, it would signal doomsday? Just saying. This is a picture taken in 1959 by the Turkish captain, Air Force captain, Ilhan Derpiner, during a NATO mapping mission. There on a mountain 20 miles south of Mount Ararat, 23 miles from the Russian border, a boat-shaped form about 500 feet long the captain passed on the word. Soon, an expedition, including American scientists, set out for the site. A quick two-day survey revealed no sign that the object was man-made. Yet, the scientists in the group said, and I quote, Nothing in nature could create such a symmetrical shape. A thorough excavation may be made in another year to solve the mystery. End of quote. They never returned. And the site was abandoned. Does that look like a boat to you? <laughs> Here's some more pictures. There's the original picture I just showed you. There's the scientist going up to survey the shape. 
there is a spy satellite. In 1985, my friend, Dr. Frankel, uh, Dr. David Franklin Pasold, former United States Merchant Marine officer and a salvage expert, who had seen Dr. or Captain Darapiner's pictures and was convinced the ark would be found on the mountains of Arad, but to the southwest of the Darapiner site. So joined with geophysicist Dr. John Baumgartner for the expedition as soon as Vassol saw the site. Remember, he's on his way to Mount Ararat. He's convinced it's up there. But when they pass by this site, he exclaimed, this is a shipwreck. And he should know because he had salvaged several archaeological shipwrecks in the past. So he set out for the rest of his life to solve the mystery of this site. Could this be evidence of Noah's Ark? Was this the right location? Fasold had brought a state-of-the-art frequency generator set on the wavelength for iron and searched the formation for internal iron loci. Fasold and the team measured the length of the formation, 515 feet, exactly 300 Egyptian cubics in length. Notice the rocks ever so often. They mark the designation of iron. Fasol believed the team had found the fossilized remains of the upper deck and that the original reed structure on top of that deck had disappeared. But one of the most surprising finds was discovered with sensitive metal detectors. The team located several strong hits that, when dug up, revealed large disc-shaped rivets. From simple observation of the metal, it was possible to see where the rivets had been hammered after being inserted through a hole. You can see that right there plainly. An analysis of the metal implies an extremely advanced knowledge of metallurgy and engineering. The metal mixture, which was a mixture of iron aluminum and titanium iron aluminum and titanium mixed an alloy the metal mixture because it does not exist in metallic form in nature and this because or before the iron age How's that happen? One word for you. Yahweh. Do I have to remind you that in the building of the tabernacle, Yahweh gave Bezalel through the Holy Spirit the ability to facet stones. No one had ever faceted stones before. They were all polished, Kubishan type, but he faceted the stones. Why? Because the Urim and the Thummim had to exist. The light and the splendor had to exist because Yahweh was going to speak through there. Likewise, no one had thought to dig up metal out of the ground, smelt it, much less mix it, to form anything during the days of Noah. 